Hello chess fans, this is Rick from chess to impress with the next video in the alphabet series. We have arrived at the letter O. And these were your suggestions. Opposition said Mr. T and he also suggested Olympiads as did Matteo Spentiado. The Owens defense was also a suggestion from Mr. Tomshi and Alberic O'Kelly de Galway also came from him. Alexander Onishuk said Gil Rowley and Roger Berryman and Oscar Pano was the suggestion from Gil. Friedrich Olafsson, Iceland's first grandmaster, was the suggestion from Igor Govorushko. I've decided to go with Mr. Tomshi's suggestion. This video is about Alberic, Josef, Rodolf, Marie, Robert, Gislain, O'Kelly de Galway who was born on the 17th of May 1911 in Anderlecht in Belgium and passed away on the 3rd of October 1980 in Brussels. He was a Belgian Grandmaster. He gained a title in 1956. He was an International Correspondence Chess Grandmaster, a title he gained in 1962 and a third ICCF World Champion in Correspondence Chess. That cycle was played between 1959 and 1962. O'Kelly was descended from John O'Kelly, an Irish-born British Army officer who was granted a nobility title in 1720 in what was then the Austrian Low Countries. Consequently, he was often addressed as Count O'Kelly de Galway. For example, on the front cover of his 1965 book about Tigran Petrosian. O'Kelly won the Belgian Championships 13 times between 1937 and 1959. He placed first at Beverwijk, that is the current Tata Steel tournament, in 1946. In 1947 he became one of Europe's leading players, having finished first at the 1947 European Zonal Tournament at Hilversum, also in the Netherlands. That was the cycle for the World Championship. He earned the International Master title in 1950, the first year that title was awarded, and he was awarded the Grand Master title in 1956. Two years later he was awarded the Belgian decoration of the Golden Palm of the Order of the Crown for his chess successes and the distinction he had brought to the nation. O'Kelly was made an international arbiter in 1962 and was the chief arbiter of the World Championship matches between Tigran Petrosian and Boris Spassky in 1966 and 1969. In 1974 he was the arbiter for the Moscow Karpov Korchnoi match. The winner was to play Bobby Fischer, that didn't happen, so in fact the winner of the Karpov Korsunov match, which was Karpov, became the 12th world champion. O'Kelly spoke French, Dutch, German, English, Spanish and Russian fluently, and some Italian. He published many books and articles, often in languages other than French. And here we see O'Kelly as the arbiter in the Karpov Korsnoy match from 1974. We see Korsnoy there on the left and Karpov on the right. As a youth, O'Kelly took lessons from the legendary Akiba Rubinstein and the O'Kelly variation in the Sicilian defense. E4, C5, Knight of 3, A6 is named after him. And we're going to look at the game of the great man. In 1948, O'Kelly de Galway played in Mar del Plata in Argentina against Arnold Denker and that is one of his most famous games. O'Kelly opened with the e-pawn and Denker played e5. If he had played c5, knight of 3 a6, then O'Kelly would have had to play against his own defense. By the way, the point of that defense is that if you play then d4, c takes, knight takes, then you can play e5 and white's knight cannot go to b5 and black did not block his dark squared bishop with d6 as he does in a Nidorf. However, if white does not play 3 d4, then the move a7 a6 might turn out to be a loss of a tempo. And also O'Kelly is the name giver of a gambit line in a Nimzo Indian. But we're digressing, let's go back to the game O'Kelly de Galway against Denker. So e4 e5 were the was the first move, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, and f5, that is a schliemann Janis gambit, a sharp line in which black plays for a kingside attack, frequently sacrificing one or two pawns. Knight c3, black took on e4, knight takes, and now striking in the center with d5, that is the point. The pawn on e5 is hanging, because the knight on c6 is pinned, but black can take the knight on e4. It's not black who is sacrificing in this game, it is white. 
who sacks a piece in this line. Knight takes c6, and if you play queen g5, that is the modern move. Of course, it's very important that black and white know exactly what they are doing, as this is a very sharp position. Queen e2 is then the next move for white. At the 1948, after knight takes c6, Denker took back on c6. Bishop takes check, that's a fork. The bishop interposed, and you can take on a8. Queen takes, queen a5 check, king d8, and this is slightly better for black, says the engine. So after bishop d7, O'Kelly, the Galway, decided to play queen h5 check straight away and not take on a8 first. G6 is not a good move because then there is queen e5 check and that wins the other rook on h8. So after queen h5 check, Denker played king e7. Queen e5 check came anyway. Now it doesn't win the rook in the corner because the g pawn is still there. Bishop e6 and d4 with the threat of d5 pinning that bishop. Again, you can take on a a8 instead. Queen takes and queen takes e7 check. That is also possible. But d4 was okay the Galway's move. That pawn was taken en passant. Bishop g5 check. Knight f6 and O'Kelly de Galway castled queenside. King f7 and rook h to e1. White is attacking with all his pieces. In a practical game, this position is very difficult to defend for black with his exposed king and his lack of development. Black took on a2. Queen a5, hitting the bishop, and bishop back to e6. And now O'Kelly spots a nice combination. He took on f6. Queen recaptured and rook takes e6, regaining the piece that he sacrificed in the opening. He cannot take it with the queen because then there is bishop d5 and that wins black's queen. Also, after rook takes e6, you cannot take with the king because that is checkmate after queen d5 check and checkmate on d7. So after rook takes e6, you have to come up, come up with something else. And Denker took on f2 with the queen, threatening checkmate on c2. Rook takes d3 to get a checkmate out of the position and also threatening to win the queen with rook f3. That will be a rook fork. And there's no defense anymore for black. The four white pieces are too strong. And please spot the undeveloped pieces in black's camp. Those two rooks and that bishop are still at home and are not taking part in the fight. King takes e6, a dying man can eat anything. Queen d5 check, king e7 and queen e5 check, and here Denker resigned. It is a forced checkmate. Let's look at one example. King f7, then there is bishop d5 check, king g6, another check from the bishop, king goes back to f7, a rook check, Bishop e7, queen takes, everything goes with check. King g8 only move, and that is checkmate. A blistering attacking game from Alberic O'Kelly de Galway. The next video in the series will, will be about the letter P. The Polgar Sisters is a very obvious one, but I'm sure you have some more creative suggestions. I'm looking forward to seeing them in the comment section. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you liked the video, it would be great if you could share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.